From the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia. Road rage on a busy highway. A woman and child survive a barrage of bullets. The latest on the investigation and advice from police if you find yourself in a similar situation. And reversing course why a local school district is now canceling a controversial plan to cut school bus service to some of its students. No com uh, complaints in the weather department as we settle into a stretch of very comfortable weather. Morning, everyone. Welcome to the News at 7, streaming on CBS News Philadelphia and on Philly 57. I'm Jim Donovan. And I'm Janelle Vareau. Welcome to this Tuesday. Let's start it off with a terrific Tuesday forecast. Meteorologist Kate Bilo in our virtual studio with all the details for us. Hey, Kate, good morning. Hey, good morning, Janelle and Jim. What a beautiful way to wake up when you step outside. You'll feel that crisp cool, comfy air. It's a great morning to take a long walk with the dog, go out for a run, get outside and enjoy this beautiful August day because this is actually atypical for the time of year. It's actually slightly cooler and less humid than what we're used to seeing here in the month of August and no complaints from me. I don't think I'm hearing many complaints in our newsroom either and hopefully not from you at home. 59 degrees in Vineland right now. It is 62 over in Smyrna, Delaware. Very comfortable start to the morning. We're in the mid 60s Philadelphia. 60s in our western suburbs here. Media is at 60 degrees. Pottstown at 58 degrees and over in Pemberton we're at 61 to start your morning. So it is comfy and you can see out the windows behind me. Nothing but sunshine out there as we start off our day. Let's talk about what to expect as the day goes on. So it's a pleasant comfy August day. Sunshine and just a few fair weather cumulus clouds firing up in the afternoon slowly turning more humid and a bit warmer through the work week, but still looks like a really fantastic stretch of weather and should stay dry through Friday. By the weekend, though, we'll have a chance for scattered showers and we will have an eye on Ernesto, which is a tropical storm in the Caribbean moving into the Atlantic and could make a run toward Bermuda by the weekend. So for us, we're looking at some clouds over the Delaware beaches. That disturbance moves south. Skies are clear in our neck of the woods. We're at 82 in Philadelphia today, 77 for the high down the shore with a nice little sea breeze in the afternoon and 80 in the Lehigh Valley. And if you're headed to the Phillies game tonight, Miami in town, it's crisp, it's comfy, 80 at first pitch and then into the 70s once the sun goes down. Coming up, we'll take you through those shower and storm chances for the weekend and I'll show you the latest track on Ernesto. But for now, let's get a check on your morning traffic. Here's Chandler Lutz. Good morning. Good morning, Kate. Right now we're still looking at that overnight construction along the westbound lanes of the Schuylkill right at the boulevard here. One of the police vehicles we were following left the scene, but the cones are still set up here. So the right lane is still blocked on that off ramp and you also still might see some crews working northbound on Route 1 all the way to Ridge Avenue. So late running construction. The good news is no major delays on the Schuylkill Expressway. Here's that camera at Route 1 right at Ridge Avenue where they have cleared, but in between the stretch of 76 and Ridge Ave, we still have a construction zone in place. The Ben Franklin Bridge sun is shining this morning. You might need the sunglasses, some sun glare as you travel inbound into Jersey, but overall you can make out the entire Philadelphia skyline looking nice and quiet there along the Ben. Overnight road work cleared across 42, but of course just keep Keep in mind we have that long term lane shift still in place. It's southbound Jim between Lower Landing Road and the Black Horse Pike. Thank you, Chandler. A woman and her nephew are victims of a frightening road rage attack in Delaware County. The gunman is accused of firing more than a dozen shots into their SUV in Habertown. CBS News Philadelphia's Wakisha Bailey in our newsroom to walk us through what happened. Really scary for that family. Wakisha, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Janelle Jim. So police say the victims are lucky to be alive this morning as this incident could have had a different outcome. With as many shots that were fired, we're very fortunate to be sitting here talking about a road rage incident and not a homicide. Monday afternoon, just before 3.30, Haverford, Haverford Township Police responded to a shooting at the 2000 block of Westchester Pike in Havertown. When police arrived at the scene, officers say they located a white Jeep Cherokee with 13 bullet holes in the headlight, hood, and windshield. Officials say inside was a woman and her 10-year-old nephew. Police say they received calls from the witnesses that the shooter was inside a black Lincoln SUV with PA plates. Minutes later, police stopped the SUV at State Road in Westchester Pike. Meanwhile, the victims were taken to a nearby hospital. She observed the vehicle and at one point the vehicle pulled alongside of her, swiped her, side swiped her and then pulled in front of her and um, like angled in front of her. At that point, that's when he opened fire, firing the uh, 12 to 13 rounds into her car. So there was a 10-year-old uh, child that was also in the car. Um, that child was in the back seat and was uninjured, thank God. 
and police say they've identified the shooter as 30 year old Sean Moses of Drexel Hill. Now the defendant is being charged with attempted homicide, aggravated assault, along with other related charges. The woman suffered only minor cuts and the child luckily was not injured. And guys, there's still no indication on what led to the road rage. In fact, police say they didn't exchange any words and the two didn't know each other. But police say if you're ever caught in a situation like this, try to stay calm and keep moving. Jim, Janelle. All right, with Keisha, really frightening there. Thank you so much for that. Now to Buckingham Township, where neighbors there are trying to process the unthinkable after police say a man fatally shot his son and a woman in their beds before turning the gun on himself. This happened yesterday morning at a home on the 3900 block of Charter Club Drive. That's where investigators say it's not clear how the woman or the gunman are related, but neighbors say they are stunned by what happened. Shocked, shocked, jaw dropping shocked. I'm like a little shaking, but as I talk about them, like thinking that it's happened, couldn't imagine. The Bucks County District Attorney's Office is asking anybody with information to contact them or Buckingham Township Police. And police investigating a case of vandalism at a black owned farm in Chester County. Investigators say somebody spray painted a swastika in one of the barns at Farmer John. This is in Westtown Township last Thursday. The property is owned by Krista Barfield, who says this is not the first time her property has been defaced with hate symbols or racial slurs. And now she says she is worried about the safety of her staff. Oh, on this area here is um, from May uh, of this year. There were racial slurs and um, other markings that were here. I also felt emotional just the fact that my entire business and my team is made up of a melting pot. You know, it, it is a its own microcosm of what America looks like is what Farmer John's team looks like. Farmer John provides produce to underserved communities. As we get closer to the election in November, campaign workers for Vice President Kamala Harris are rallying supporters in key swing states. Former President Donald Trump spent time speaking with Elon Musk in a conversation that touched on everything from foreign conflicts to his plans on illegal immigration. Howard Monroe is here with us in the studio right now with more. Good morning, Howard. Good morning to you, Jim. CBS News has learned the FBI is now investigating whether Iranian hackers targeted individuals associated with both the Trump and Harris campaigns. Sources say the FBI launched the probe in early summer after both teams experienced attempted phishing schemes targeting campaign officials. They actually did something that was impossible. Former President Donald Trump back on his one savior platform X, formerly known as Twitter. He detailed the attempt on his life in a lengthy, friendly conversation with the company's owner, Elon Musk. What was it like for you? Not pleasant. I didn't know fun. I had I didn't know I had that much blood. The audio only chat with Musk, who has endorsed Trump for president 2024. The former president also went after President Biden and his 2024 opponent, Vice President Kamala Harris. She is a radical left San Francisco liberal, third rate phony candidate. In response, the Harris campaign wrote, Trump's entire campaign is in service to people like Elon Musk and himself, self-obsessed rich guys who will sell out the middle class and who cannot run a live stream in the year 2024. We will make history. The vice president off the trail, but in swing state Michigan, surrogates mobilized black women across Detroit. Running mate Tim Walls is set for a multi-state fundraising blitz starting today in Los Angeles. And we are now 84 days away from Election Day. And by the way, the DNC, it begins on Monday in Chicago. Jim, back to you. Thank you, Howard. Former President Trump, meanwhile, will be back in Pennsylvania on Saturday to hold a campaign rally. He'll be in Wilkesbury. It will be his second trip to the state since the assassination attempt in Butler last month. That shooting left the shooter and one other person dead. Three others were wounded, including the former president. And now to an update on a story we first told you about yesterday. After backlash from parents, and even the mayor, the Deptford Township School District has now announced it will withdraw what was a controversial proposal for a new busing policy that was introduced just days ago. Well, originally under the plan, some students would not receive free busing. South Jersey reporter Brandon Goldner spoke with parents and township leaders who are relieved to learn about the reversal. Look at the shoulder. There's barely anything for them to walk on. 
too. That's scary. It is scary. Teresa Huntington feared walking this path would be how her children would have to get to school this year. It's not safe. It's not safe for our kids to have to walk in a lot of these roads in Decker Township. The school district originally announced Friday students living within two miles of their elementary or middle school or two and a half miles from their high school would no longer receive free busing. Instead, they would have to pay $365 a year per student to ride the bus, carpool, or walk to school. But Monday afternoon, the district announced it'll rescind this new policy and restore courtesy busing. I was very excited for everybody in Deptford Township. The reversal came after the district received criticism from parents and Deptford Township leaders like Mayor Paul Medaney. It's completely unacceptable, totally unsafe for these kids to walk to school in Deptford. While the school district says it'll maintain courtesy busing, the superintendent says there will be a need for more neighborhood bus stops, which may increase the length of the bus ride. The Board of Education is scheduled to meet next Tuesday, which Huntington expects will be crowded with parents. We're all probably going to attend that, which we said you better move it from the Monongahela cafeteria to the football stadium because you had a lot of angry parents. We requested an interview with the superintendent, but we received an email back stating that he was out of the district the rest of the week. Brandon Goldner, CBS News, Philadelphia. Well, the Philadelphia School District is celebrating back to school season today with its Ring the Bell PHL celebration. This is video from last year's event. Today's event's happening at Citizens Bank Park. Kicks off at 10 o'clock this morning. We'll feature Superintendent Tony Watlington, who you saw running by there, with Philly ambassadors Mickey Morandini and Scott Palmer, also the Philly fanatic and students from local schools. Always a fun day.